Hi, and thank you for watching the next installment in this series where we look at what the globalists are telling us on the front cover of their Economist magazine and how their predictions for the world in 2019 lines up with Bible prophecy. In the previous video we spent quite a bit of time on the four horsemen of the apocalypse and today we will look at some of the other imagery and the possible meaning behind these. In my analysis I compare what they are showing us with what is currently happening in the world and what we are told by our Heavenly Father in His Word with regards to the end times. We know that we are living in the end times given the overwhelming amount of signs given to us over the past few years that have been pointing us to the fact that the tribulation will soon be starting and as we wait for more of the pieces of the puzzle to fall in place we do what we can to warn people of what will soon be coming over the earth and to share the good news of salvation and the gospel with others. In this video I am going to look at who some of the unfamiliar people are that are portrayed on this cover and the reasons for them featuring on this edition. I am also going to look at a few other connections between the latest cover of The Economist magazine and the cards that were displayed on the cover of the world in 2017 edition. Also, remember that what I share with you is only my opinion on what I see and what I read in the Word of God, and the connections I draw between the two. I could also be wrong. There are two people on this cover that are not immediately familiar to most, and the first is the old man with the hat. This is, in fact, Walt Whitman a 19th century U.S. poet, about whom the following is said on Wikipedia. Whitman is among the most influential poets in the American canon, often called the father of free verse. His work was very controversial in its time, particularly his poetry collection Leaves of Grass, which was described as obscene for its overt sexuality. This information may already be hinting at the Me Too hashtag that is shown on the chest of the Vitruvian man, given Whitman's obsession with sexuality. Walt Whitman was born in 1819 and passed away in 1892, and as such Whitman and Albert Pike, which I discussed in the previous video, are both from the same era. As we delve a little deeper, we stumble upon more aspects that are alluding to the reasons for Whitman's face being on this cover. We read the following from a book written to conserve Whitman's fame, in which the following is stated. Four of Walt's most essential teachings were emphasized, brotherhood, immutable justice, immortality, and personal responsibility. And as there was in Walt's time only one existing translation of the Bhagavad Gita, most of Walt's similarity to these great ancient scriptures must have come from the fact that he himself was one of the great Illuminati. So it is clear that Whitman too could have played a role in the plan that was articulated by Albert Pike, given their connection to the Illuminati. And when searching to see what this involvement entailed, we discover that it had to do with a plan for the demise of the USA, which is possibly also linked to what is displayed on the Great Seal of America. Also, keep the immortality aspect mentioned in this passage in mind, as we will see how this fits in with some of the other aspects depicted on this cover. In 1856, Whitman wrote to his fellow Freemason Rolf Waldo Emerson that the United States is a work in progress, which would have to die for the Zionist plan of world conquest and a new world order to come into being. This is what he said. America, having duly conceived, bears out of herself offspring of her own to do the workmanship wanted. To freedom, to strength, to poems, to personal greatness, it is never permitted to rest. Now a generation, or part of a generation. To be ripe beyond further increase is to prepare to die. The architects of these states laid their foundations and passed to further spheres. What they laid is a work done, as much more remains. Now are needed other architects whose duty is not less difficult, but perhaps more difficult. Each age forever needs architects. This is from Leaves of Grass, published in 1856. This conversation between Whitman and Emerson could very well be pointing to the planned destruction of America, which is also hinted at early on in the iPetco 2 animation. 
In this case, it would seem that a second 9-11 event could be planned that would lead to the destruction of the USA. This process is very likely also represented by the phoenix that will rise from the ashes, which was displayed on the 1988 edition of this magazine, where a phoenix rising out of the ashes is shown with a new one world currency being associated with it and pointing to 2018. It is also important to note that the latest edition of this magazine is the 33rd edition, which is a very important number for the globalists as this is the number that represents illumination for them or having received the light of Lucifer. Another enigma is the woman that is featured towards the bottom right of the cover. It took me some time to find out who this was but I finally found the information and this is a self-portrait of Artemisia Gentileschi, an Italian Baroque painter of the 16th century. The story would seem to have a double application and it is also quite interesting that her surname contains the word Gentile in it. Firstly, her story is very strongly associated with the Me Too hashtag shown on the Vitruvian man's chest, as she was the victim of rape at age 17 during a seven-month court case in which she was even tortured to prove that she was telling the truth. Everything was finally swept under the rug by the time it completed. The person who raped her was believed and proven to be guilty, but being one of the Pope's favorite painters, he was pardoned, never receiving any punishment for his offenses, and he got away scot-free. I am of the opinion that a similar situation will exist once the tribulation starts, and will repeat what happened on the earth during the days of Noah, as explained in the previous video that the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they chose. There were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them. The same became mighty men which were of old, men of renown. Satan and his fallen angels will once again choose for themselves wives from among humanity on a much larger scale this time to create a hybrid race that will become the leavened lump that will face the Lord Jesus Christ when he returns to the earth to set up his everlasting kingdom. There will be nothing loving in these relationships between the fallen angels and the women that they will choose for themselves to rape and for me this would seem to be what the Me Too hashtag and the image of Artemisia are pointing to. This also explains why there is a stalk that carries a baby with a serial number on the package, as this refers to the newborns that will have the mark of the beast in their DNA, and that will be the result of women being raped by fallen angels and producing a hybrid race that is made up of a mixture between human DNA and that of fallen angels. Remember also that during Noah's time, according to the book of Enoch, there were only 200 fallen angels on the earth perpetrating this corruption of human DNA. During the upcoming tribulation, one third of the entire angelic realm will be confined to the earth and it will truly become a time of weeping and gnashing of teeth for those who remain behind on the earth during this time, when Satan's main goal will be to get those who remain on the earth to follow and worship him, and to create more offspring in his own image, and in doing so, he will leaven everything that remains of the three measures of meal that were saved during Noah's flood. The only ones that will escape corruption during the tribulation will be those who lay down their lives as humans with God's image in their DNA, refusing the mark of the beast, as well as the remnant of Israel that will enter the Millennial Kingdom as mortals under God's supernatural protection in the wilderness during the Tribulation. This is also where we need to look a little closer at the situation that will exist on the earth once the Tribulation starts, and in my opinion, this is hinted at in the fact that the Vitruvian man is wearing what would seem to be virtual reality glasses. This concept has featured before on the cover of this magazine's predictions for the world in 2017. On the Magician card you will see the Magician wearing virtual reality gear and producing 3D printed houses. Now, 
This may seem like the rise of technology that enables people to print objects, but we also have to take into account the infinity sign shown behind this character as normally displayed on the magician card. When we compare what these images are showing us with what is written in the Word of God, we discover that these images and the DNA mark shown on the Vitruvian man's arm, which could also represent the infinity mark if it's slightly reconfigured, have to do with a change in what we understand to be our reality today, as well as changes that Satan plans to bring about to God's image that is contained in our DNA. What we can only experience today through virtual reality, in which the supernatural becomes possible, will become a horrible reality during the tribulation from what I can see. It would seem that the veil that exists today between the physical and the spiritual realms will be removed and people will experience the world around them as if they had virtual reality gear on in today's world. The problem is that this new reality will not be one that is pleasant in any way, but will be horrible beyond our wildest imaginations. Some aspects that I see pointed out in the Word of God are relayed to us through the following passages. And he shall speak great words against the Most High, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and think to change times and laws. And they shall be given into his hand until a time and times and the dividing of time. The changing of times and laws that are mentioned in this passage could point to the fact that the reality that we are used to, where supernatural aspects of our lives on earth are currently seen as exceptional or out of the ordinary, could become the norm during the tribulation. The Bible tells us that the Antichrist's arrival will be associated with lying wonders that will fool the people of the world, and even the elect. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming, even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they received not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. The Bible tells us that during the tribulation there will be an angel that will preach the everlasting gospel to all the nations. The privilege to share the gospel with the world is currently given to humans who believe in Jesus as being the Son of God. During the tribulation the world will not only be exposed to Satan's supernatural reality, but also to that of God through an angel that will proclaim the truth in opposition to Satan's lies, together with the work of the two witnesses. And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth, and to every nation, and kindred, and tongue, and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God, and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment is come, and worship him that made heaven, and earth, and the sea, and the fountains of waters. And I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and threescore days clothed in sackcloth. These are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before the God of the earth. And if any man will hurt them, fire proceedeth out of their mouth, and devoureth their enemies. And if any man will hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. The Word of God also tells us that during the tribulation the earth will no longer cover its dead when we combine what is said in the following three passages. Thy dead men shall live, together with my dead body shall they arise. Awake and sing, ye that dwell in dust. For the dew is as the dew of herbs, and the earth shall cast out the dead. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. And in those days shall men seek death, and shall not find it, and shall desire to die, and death shall flee from them. This aspect could very well be the reason for so many zombie movies and series that are constantly forced onto us through the media, 
telling us ahead of time about the new horrible reality that will be coming once the tribulation starts. When we consider the houses that are printed on the magician card, this too has, in my opinion, to do with Satan's attempt to interfere with God's purpose for those that love him. Jesus said that the days of the Son of Man will be as it was during the days of Noah. And as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be also in the days of the Son of Man. Paul tells us about the houses that are our bodies in the following passage, and keep in mind how this relates to the houses that are printed by the person on the magician card with the infinity symbol behind him, and the fact that immortality was one of Walt Whitman's essential teachings. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God, an house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this we groan, earnestly desiring to be clothed upon with our house which is from heaven. Satan's plan from what we are shown in these images with the DNA on the arm of the Vitruvian man and the character who is producing 3D printed houses is to offer humanity new bodies that are no longer made in the image of God. God's plan for our earthly bodies is to be replaced by spiritual bodies made of Jesus' righteousness once these limited and corrupted bodies are done away with, as seen in these two passages. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread, till thou return unto the ground, for out of it wast thou taken, for dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. And, as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. The Bible also tells us that we were created in God's image, meaning that our DNA contains God's original design or program for our bodies, as can be seen in this passage. And God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Satan's plan from what I see presented in these images and from what is happening in the world today, with all of God's designs in nature being tampered with and altered through genetic modification, is to interfere with God's plan for humanity and to offer those that remain on the earth after the start of the tribulation an alternative. In the book of Revelation we see that Satan will do this through the mark of the beast or the image of the beast as opposed to God's image which forms part of our DNA that will be offered to people and this ties in with the lying wonders that will be associated with the revelation of the identity of the Antichrist that we mentioned earlier in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. And deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth, that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak, and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. The mark of the beast will not only be a chip or information device that is implanted in a person's body, as one could easily remove this again. From what we are shown in the book of Revelation, the acceptance of the mark will lead to irreversible changes and will remove a person's humanity as well as their eligibility for receiving salvation and it will replace God's image in a person's DNA with that of Satan's or the beast. The Antichrist will most likely offer people what could be considered an upgrade to their bodies, most likely explained by the Antichrist to represent the next level of evolution, becoming superhumans whose bodies will no longer be susceptible to disease or sickness, and with a promise to also achieve immortality, and possibly even that of having supernatural abilities. 
All of this sounding wonderful to those who will be deceived by Satan and who have been programmed by the media to desire supernatural abilities and everlasting life in corruptible bodies, but something that will void a person's eligibility for salvation through faith in Jesus. As Jesus only came to save those who are made after the image of God, and not those who have the mark of the beast. Satan, the fallen angels, and the demons all know that Jesus is the Son of God, but God does not offer them salvation, as Jesus' blood only cleanses humans who were made in the image of God of their sins. A very stern warning is given in the book of Revelation to those who accept the mark of the beast, as they will become sold to Satan forever having this image in their DNA and will no longer be eligible for salvation, for they will no longer be human. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image, and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up for ever and ever, and they have no rest day nor night who worship the beast and his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. Can you see how a person who is made in the image of God and who believes that Jesus is the Son of God, and who finds himself in the tribulation, can through their own choice and exercise of their own free will in accepting Satan's mark of ownership in their body, bar themselves from receiving God's promise of salvation. Revelation clearly states that if any man, saved or unsaved, worships the beast or his image, they will receive God's wrath and will be tormented forever. There are many people who say that it is impossible for a saved person to lose their salvation, and that only unsaved people will be left in the tribulation, but this does not line up with the Word of God, or the models and patterns that were provided to us in the Word of God. In addition, the book of Revelation clearly shows us that there will be believers in Jesus as the Son of God who will be present in the tribulation. They are called the tribulation saints and they will be killed for refusing to accept the mark of the beast. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus, and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. Does this not clearly show us that any person who finds themselves in the tribulation will have a choice in this matter? So should it happen that you find yourself in the tribulation, please do not believe the lies that you will be told about the mark and the benefits of receiving it in your body. It may promise you what would seem to be amazing and wonderful benefits, but it will also remove your humanity in the process as well as your eligibility to become part of God's family. And when you consider the outcome of such a decision from the perspective of eternity that lies ahead, it is far better to lay down your earthly life in this corrupt body, and to receive what God intended for us who are called children of God, and who were made in His image. Another aspect that would seem to be linked between the covers of 2019 and that of 2017, would be what is depicted in Da Vinci's helicopter traveling to the moon. In the latest edition of this magazine, there is an article about China and Israel's planned missions to the moon in 2019. But in my opinion, this points to something which will also be associated with the start of the tribulation. On the cover of the 2017 edition, we see the star card, which has on it what looks like the surface of the moon and maybe the dark side of the moon given the dark color. We also see the faces of people in stars that are portrayed on this card and they would seem to be associated with that of missing people that used to be displayed on milk cartons. 2 Thessalonians 2 tells us that the wicked can only be revealed once the restrainer is removed. And we also know that the harvest model shows us that the poor will be restrained from gleaning the corners of the harvest 
while the main harvest remains in the field. When this event known as Jesus' harvest takes place and described to us in Revelation 14, and when those who belong to Jesus' harvest or the main barley harvest is removed from the earth, the son of perdition will have to offer an explanation to those who remain behind and represented by the corners of the harvest. And this will be done to explain what happened to the missing people. The explanation will most likely be a lie that would involve these missing people being instantly transported to some other celestial destination by technology not yet available to humanity in order to allow those remaining on earth and selected by the Antichrist to receive his gift of reaching the next level in the process of human evolution. He will possibly also explain that those who were removed had to be taken because they were holding the rest of the world back in their quest for achieving immortality and becoming their own gods. We know that this was Satan's lie to us right from the start when Adam and Eve were promised to become like God should they choose to listen to Satan's advice and disobey God. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die, for God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as God's knowing good and evil. It would seem that the same lie will once again be offered to the world during Satan's unrestrained rule over the earth during the tribulation. And most people will not know that those who were removed from the earth were actually preventing Satan from having full authority over the earth. Those who will be missing from the earth are part of Jesus' main harvest of souls, of which he will lose none, except the son of perdition, as written in the word of God. Those who remain behind on the earth when the tribulation starts, based on what we are shown, will be part of that section of God's harvest of faith that must be given over to the poor, and these people stand a chance to become Satan's property forever. I hope this information would help to show you how Satan's plan for this time during which he will be bound to the earth are being put out before us in plain sight and has been written to us in the word of God long ago as prophecies for our day. In the next video we will look at more of the aspects that are displayed on this cover and what it could possibly mean from a biblical perspective. So be sure to subscribe and to click the little bell next to the subscribe button in order to be notified when the next video is uploaded. Also please like this video and share it with your friends and family on social media. I really do appreciate it. If you would like to support this work, you are welcome to do so at the link provided in the description below. Thank you very much to all those who have supported this work over the years. Your support and prayers are very much appreciated. May our Heavenly Father bless you and keep you, and may He make His face shine upon you, and give you peace that transcends all understanding. Until next time, or until we meet in the air, God bless.